This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and Discord servers, on-screen shout outs, and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. Hey, there's been a lot of questions about the Browns building a new dome stadium, some debate, um, some argument, and I just wanna make a video where all those questions can be put together, found in one place, um, and talked about. The first question when it comes to all of this is, hey, what's the de facto deadline for all of this stuff? When does this have to really be settled by? Well, the Browns lease ends in 2028 with Cleveland Browns Stadium, which means if you're the Browns and you want to move into your new stadium, I believe this, the lease ends at the end of the 2028 uh, season, not at the beginning of the 2028 season. Um, if that is not the case, then just subtract a year from what I'm saying. But if that is the case, if the Browns lease ends in 2028 after the season, then that means the Browns would want to have a new stadium built by 2029, which means that the Browns would probably want to start building the stadium at the latest by the start of 2026. It takes about three years to build a stadium. If we're talking about getting it ready by August of 2029, you're going to want to start well before August of 2026, right? You're probably going to want to start somewhere um, summer of 20, 2025. So that's when this stuff has to be settled where there has to be funding, money, all the disputes between the city, the county, um, Brook Park and the Cleveland Browns. All of these things have to be settled by then, because if that stadium wants to be put up by the end of the Browns lease, that's what has to happen. Now, you can always get a lease extension. The Browns could do that. That's not usually that difficult to do even when you move the team. So as long as you're keeping the team in the city of Cleveland. So it, even if you're moving the team out the city, right? Because we saw this with Oakland um, moving to Las Vegas where they were able to get a lease extension too. So it's not going to be the most difficult thing to get a lease extension. I wouldn't use the lease ending date as a hard deadline on when all of this is, but that's probably like... The easiest deadline to throw out there is that the lease ends in 2028. Another question that's been asked by a lot of people who really want the team and the, the Browns to stay in downtown, but are more open to having a dome team is, hey, why can we not build the dome downtown where the Cleveland Browns are? Now, there are a couple of reasons, some stated by the Haslam family, some that are just apparent when the first reason that the Haslam state why they can't build a dome is because of FAA regulation enforcement near Burke Lakefront Airport that restricts the height of buildings built around airports. I mean, this makes sense. You want to be careful with how tall you build stuff near airports. Airports have to be very visible to people in the air. Uh, that part in a vacuum makes sense. Now, some of the part, the part where you might ask a question is if the Browns can't build a dome because of height restrictions next to Burke Lakefront Airport, why can they build a dome next to Hopkins International Airport, right? Because this is going to be a near airport no matter what. So why is one airport okay and doesn't suffer from FAA regulations, but the other does? And it's an important question to ask. The reason that does not matter for the Brook Park location, but does matter for the downtown location is simple. If you look at the video of the Browns new proposed dome stadium, that stadium is about 60% built into the ground, which means a lot of the height of that stadium when you're in it is actually underground. When you look at the structure from the outside, it's actually not that tall. That's why they can build that stadium in Brook Park. Now, the reason they can't do the same thing um, in their current location is because their current location is next to Lake Erie, which means you're just not going to have the same stability 
digging into the ground on a structure that big to build a dome that big next to Lake Erie. The water, all that stuff, you know, it's just science. So that is why the dome cannot be built downtown. Um, another reason why the Haslands probably would prefer the dome not be built in the same location that it sits right now, maybe in another downtown location, but in the location it sits right now, they wouldn't want to do it. Another reason they wouldn't want to do it is if the Browns build a stadium where their current stadium is, that means for three years, the Cleveland Browns have to play somewhere else. There's not a great place for the Cleveland Browns to play if it's not Cleveland. I know people throw out Columbus. I'm not 100% sure Ohio State would want the Browns playing there. I'm not 100% sure the Browns would want to be playing at Ohio Stadium. It doesn't seem like something either team really wants to do. Um, the Browns don't want to play in Columbus. The Browns would like to stay near their base in Cleveland, Ohio. And look, if they play in Columbus, they'll have some fans there. They'll be able to fit like 60, 70,000 people in there. But also, you got to think about the NFL. The NFL does not like teams playing in these college stadiums, especially these giant college stadiums, if they cannot guarantee they can fill them. Because it would be a bad look for the Shield if... A Browns game happens there Sunday and they can only get 70,000 people. Meanwhile, a Ohio State game, they can fill 100,000 people. Now, there are a lot of reasons why Ohio State can put 100,000 people in that stadium, but the Browns probably could only put 70,000. One of those reasons being the Browns are going to charge way more on ticket prices than Ohio State does. Ohio State has kind of flatter ticket fees than what the Browns would have. Um, also, the NFL doesn't like playing in stadiums that like aren't chair back seats, stuff like that. That like, the league's not going to really want to go for. It's not really an option to play at Ohio Stadium. The Haslam's do have a stadium in Columbus, soccer stadium. The NFL doesn't really want that, right? That's a really small stadium. The only real option I can see is them playing in Canton while that stadium gets built downtown. Would not love that. I don't think the NFL would like it. I don't think the Browns would like it. And I think fans would hate it um, if they were playing in Canton. Because if there are usually 60,000 people that are willing to pay for a Browns ticket and there's only 25,000 seats, 30,000 seats, that means that ticket price is going to skyrocket. And that's not good. Right. You don't want to try to go to a Browns game and it costs like, God forbid, you're good. And it costs like 800 bucks for a seat. I saw this happen um, in L.A. when the Chargers were playing at StubHub. The reason nobody went to those games were twofold. One, StubHub Arena is really far away in L.A. It's not close to the L.A. City Center. And two, since there were so little seats for such a big demand, NFL football, ticket prices were insane. So the NFL wants to avoid, and that's LA, a sport, a city that's kind of questionable about how much their demand is for football, especially the Chargers. Imagine the Browns in that kind of situation. The ticket prices would be insane. It'd be a bad look for everybody. There's really nowhere to, like the closest place the Browns could maybe play is like <laughs> Detroit. Like that might make, like if you're the Browns, Detroit actually wouldn't probably make the most sense, but you see what I mean? You want to play in Detroit for three years? I don't think anybody wants to do that. But that's another issue, right? If you want to build a dome where the existing stadium is, you got to be able to have a good answer that can satisfy everybody involved about where the Browns are going to play. If you play in uh, Canton, it's going to be a disaster when it comes to ticket prices, right? Logistically, it'll be fine. But ticket prices is going to be, be a mess. It's going to be an absolute disaster. Uh, fan experience, not going to be great. For the league, not going to love playing in a super small high school stadium. They're not going to like that. Um, Ohio Stadium has logistical issues, right, being two and a half hours away from the city of Cleveland or even more. Um, and playing in a college stadium, a giant college stadium, not really something the NFL embraces. 
Um, and not something that Jimmy Haslam wants to do either. So it's it, it's a big question, right? So the reason they can't build that dome downtown, twofold, FAA regulations, you can only build a structure but so high. Um, so if the Browns want to build a dome that's the same capacity as Cleveland Browns Stadium, they just couldn't because it can't. It, you can only have it be so high. Um, I'm sure if they really wanted to, they could work around it, but I don't think they want to work around it. Um, there's also other constrictions there, right? The the fact that it is on the lake um, and that does kind of make maintenance costs go up because water, metal, not great. Um, other reasons are there too that I'm pretty sure the Haslam's are going to throw out there to try to nickel and dime the city for. But that's like the main reason FAA regulations, flexibility with construction. Um, and if they play in Brook Park in 2029, that means that they can still stay in the Brown Stadium as long as possible. And also, like, if you're the city and you're making this argument that the Browns can't leave downtown because it would be too much of an economic tear for the businesses, building a dome in the same location where the current stadium is, seems like a bad solution given the logic that they have put out there. And that logic is we can't lose the Browns. The Browns are too valuable to downtown, but we'll lose them for three years because we gotta. they got to play somewhere else. They might even play outside the county, Cuyahoga County, like all the way into Columbus for three years just so we could build the stadium here. It doesn't, I don't think that really makes a ton of sense there. We'll talk about more about the actual impact of the Browns leaving downtown um, in a minute, but that's one thing. So if you're wondering why the dome can't be built downtown, that's one of the reasons it can't be built downtown. Um, what is the city and county's proposal? Are the city and county pushing for a dome downtown? No, they want to build a outdoor stadium downtown or renovate the current stadium and they really just want to renovate the current stadium that's where they're at right so the city's proposal is to renovate the current stadium the county's proposal is to renovate the current stadium for all of the things that i proposed earlier right you cannot be the city and say the browns cannot leave downtown they're too vital these businesses will go under and then fund a plan that would include the browns playing out the county for three years so they cannot advocate for a new stadium. They will never advocate for a new stadium because there's nowhere in the city where the Browns can play. If that were, if this were a situation like Minnesota, where the University of Minnesota has a nice stadium, 60,000 seats, where the Vikings can play while they build a new, it would be different. But Cleveland State doesn't have a football team that would even have a stadium if it even existed. There's no 60,000 uh, seat football stadium in the county or in the city that they can go to. So they need to just push for renovations, renovations that could keep the stadium open during the season. That's what they're proposing. I, for one, if you want my opinion on adding more renovations to a stadium that's already showing its age and let's be honest, was built in a rush, I'm not for it. That stadium has a lot of issues. Has a lot of issues because of how it's built. It has a lot of issues when it comes from a fan experience standpoint. And it has a lot of issues when it comes from a fan safety standpoint. The Browns have like two ways to get out the upper deck. And they're two escalators on two sides of the building. And that escalator just doesn't feel safe. <laughs> like it doesn't feel safe. Like there's so much about that stadium that cannot change because that's how it was built. That is what it is. And no amount of renovations is going to change that. You can't build a roof on top of it. You can't do that's never been done. And that never will be done because it doesn't make sense. The only time they put a roof on something was Arthur Ashe stadium um, in New York and it's still not temperature controlled and they still have issues with the roof mechanism all the time. So there, the proposal is just to renovate the new stadium, put some new scoreboards in there, slap some new paint on there, maybe 
uh, move some things around within the building, but you're not going to be able to really do anything too extensive with the renovation. And they're offering $500 million for it. The Haslam's would probably introduce another billion dollars. And I think most of that money that would be used in that renovation, from what I understand what the current plans are, are like to build a land bridge and to build stuff around the current stadium, not necessarily to upgrade the current experience in the stadium. And let's be honest, that stadium is starting to get old. It's starting to show its age and it's been showing its age for a little while here. Um, so I wouldn't, I don't love that the city's only solution and they don't really have many options is to renovate this current stadium. Now the big question, why does the city want to keep the Browns in downtown so bad, right? Um, their stated reason, I find a little comical, to be honest. Now, again, that's my opinion. But their stated reason is that the city of downtown Cleveland is built around the amount of people that Cleveland Browns Stadium attracts downtown. And on the surface, that might sound like a good explanation because, well, I mean, Brown Stadium is the biggest venue in Cleveland. The Browns are the biggest team in Cleveland. It would make sense that that brings the most people to Cleveland. But does it? Because the Browns only play so many home games. They play the least home games in the city because they're a football team. Also, the stadium of all the other stadiums, maybe outside of a uh, progressive field, hosts the least. Well, no, actually, that stadium definitely holds the least events. So, yeah, it's big, but the volume is not there, right? There's not that many concerts. I think the Browns have a concert scheduled after having SummerSlam this year. Like, this was a busy year for that stadium. I still think overall they won't have more than, like, 12 events at that stadium. Um, and when you look at that and you look at like, okay, let's assume SummerSlam got like 55,000 people, um, this concert that they're going to have, uh, in a month is probably going to have another 50,000 people. So that's about 105,000 people. You add 68,000. That's the average attendance for the Browns. You multiply that by eight, you get about 750,000 people coming downtown, not individually, but t in total. The reason that number is not that impressive and why, why I question that narrative being true is if you look at the three major venues in Cleveland, I would argue Cleveland Brown Stadium attracts the least amount of people downtown. Because yeah, 750,000 seems like a lot of people. But if you do the same for the Cleveland Cavaliers, you just talk about the Cavs games alone. I'm not even talking about the countless concerts, the countless events, the guard, the other teams that are hosted in uh, the, not the Quick and Lounge Arena, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. We're not even talking about any of that other stuff, which is a lot of the traffic that gets brought downtown. Um, but we're just talking about Cavs games. The Cavs have an average attendance of about 1,900. You multiply that by all their home games, it's 793,143. Again, that's not including concerts. That's not including all the other things. Like when you go to downtown Cleveland, nine times out of 10, you're going to go to Rocket Mortgage Mill Fieldhouse. It's like the main reason to go downtown Cleveland. Not usually just because the Cavs are there. It's for all the other events that that arena hosts. Another big draw to downtown Cleveland is the Cleveland Guardians. And that is the one I think everybody forgets about because it's baseball. But 23,000 people on average go to those games. They have about 81 home games in baseball. That's 1.9 million people coming downtown over the course of a summer to see the Guardians. So when we're talking about draws just by the sports teams, and look, that Browns number includes SummerSlam and a concert. I'm adding 105,000 people to the Browns home game number. So that number is more inflated than any of the other numbers. We're talking about the, that stadium still drawing the least amount of people by a significant margin. 
once you add in the fact that the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse has all these concerts, Disney on ice, all this shit that goes down there. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, the only place downtown that Cleveland Brown Stadium outdraws from a number standpoint is the Wolfstein Center. So this argument that downtown Cleveland's economy would collapse because the Brown Stadium isn't there just doesn't make sense to me from a number standpoint. The Cavs bring more people downtown more frequently. The Guardians bring more people downtown more frequently. And the Browns, they do bring a lot of people on Sundays downtown. But like how many of those Sundays are in weather conditions where you are just trying to get in and get out of downtown Cleveland? Like you're not trying to go to the bar at the words. Because it's in the wintertime. Like, I think the most valuable thing for the city of Cleveland in its downtown economy, especially when you're talking about, like, bar traffic, is probably the Guardians. It's always going to be the Guardian. They play in the summer. And concerts. Guardians concerts. Like, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, the Guardians, those are going to be the two most attractive draws to coming downtown. Think about all the times you've ever come downtown if you've lived in the city of Cleveland. And count on your finger right now. How many times it's been for the Guardians? How many times it's been for uh, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse? And how many times it's been for Cleveland Brown Stadium? Unless you're a season ticket holder, I doubt that you have a, a number of fingers up for Cleveland Brown Stadium that really competes with the other two. I know for me, I it's usually when I was in Cleveland, I'm going to the queue or I'm going to a baseball game, or I'm going to do something and then go to a baseball game in like the third inning, like something along those lines. Think about it like this. If you go to like four baseball games, that's way more than most people would ever go to Cleveland Brown Stadium for, for football games. Cause like going to four football games, not many people do that. Not many people do that. So that is my like retort to that argument just naturally is, how is Cle how are the Cleveland Browns in that stadium that important to the downtown economy when they don't bring that many people downtown? Like, if you want to say they're going to take a hit on Sundays because there's not going to be as many people downtown to be in the bars around the stadium, sure. But, like, how big is that hit? Because people are still going to come downtown to their favorite sports bar to watch the game if they're not going to go to Brook Park to, to go to the game, right? So if those people are always going to exist. They're probably more likely to go downtown because there's going to be less traffic. They're not going to have to pay 45 bucks to park um, just to go to a bar. Like, they don't got to worry about that. There's going to be less people downtown, less predatory parking garage practices going on downtown. It seems like a lot of the stuff in fear mongering about, oh, what about the businesses and maybe even business owners fears about the Browns moving downtown is more about just the thought than the reality. Because nothing about the reality of the Cleveland Browns moving that stadium from Brook Park to downtown makes it seem like they're going to like it's going to destroy the economy uh, of downtown Cleveland. I think the Guardians are very important to downtown Cleveland. I think that arena is very important to downtown Cleveland, but that stadium has always kind of been disconnected to what we associate with downtown Cleveland anyways, because it's like a 20 minute walk away from anything else in downtown Cleveland outside like the rock and roll hall of fame. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't buy that argument. Like, I don't think that argument holds up under scrutiny from the city. If it did, I would be pushing for it. Right. But it doesn't hold up under scrutiny um now the the scrutiny that does hold up for the stadium i think is this question how is that stadium being funded right they made it seem in their press release to neotrans that this stadium would be funded by the revenues that the stadium makes kind of similar to how paris um funded the olympics this year they they basically funded 92 percent of the olympics 
by the revenue made off the Olympics. Is that the Browns plan? That's been done before. If that's the plan, and this isn't going to be explicitly taxpayer driven, which means if you are somebody who has no interest in watching the Cleveland Browns, no interest in going to Brook Park, your taxes aren't going to go up because the Browns are there. This is just going to affect people who patronize the Brook Park location because that's going to be the taxes put on the businesses there, the taxes put on the team there and the ticket price. That's going to be what pays for the stadium. That's the case. It's not the greatest, but it's fine, right? The greatest would be if Jimmy Haslam just funded this whole thing out of pocket, but that's not going to happen. So if you can do this, that's fine. If it's being funded by like raising taxes for like regular people who might not want to go to Brook Park, I don't like that. I don't like that at all, right? If you're asking me what could happen that can make me against the Brook Park Dome idea is if they announce that they want everybody in the city to pay for it or they like put the overrun cost on the city right because whatever their budget is they're gonna go over it they all stadiums always go over budget are the haslam's carrying the overrun cost they said that they would but if that changes to the taxpayer that changes my opinion on it that makes me against the brook park dome idea how it gets funded does matter Some of the reasons that the city have stated on why the stadium can't move, I could care less about. I don't think those reasons make sense. If I'm being honest with you, I explain why I feel like that. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. But that's why I'm at where I'm at. Um, Where are the Browns at with this stadium? Right now, it's important to remember that the Brook Park Stadium is a concept. It is not a blueprint of what they're going to build. What they're going to build could look completely different. It can look identical to what they showed there. That is a concept. So it is what they hope to build. It is their vision of the future, but that vision could easily change. They have not put a single strut of metal into the ground that is not broken ground yet. There is no date of when that could happen. We are a year or two away from any of that becoming in reality. Now questions about the Brook Park location. Some people have asked me, hey, if they built that dome in Brook Park, can we still have natural grass? Now, the natural grass versus turf debate has been something that has been going on online for a little while. Players like playing on natural grass more than turf. And there have been some studies that have showed that playing on natural grass does make it so you experience less injuries to your lower extremities than turf because turf has more friction. If you plant your foot in turf, there's a good chance that your foot is not going to move in turf. And sometimes the ground having a little give helps you avoid injury. That's the whole argument for natural grass. The truth is, if the Browns build that stadium in Brook Park, it is not going to be a natural grass stadium. Um, There is no way that I could see that the Browns would go out their way to build a natural grass stadium inside. I just don't think they would do it. It doesn't make sense. I know people have brought up that they could do what some Premier League teams have done, which is build like an underground apparatus to grow natural grass. The Browns have no incentive to do anything as extravagant as that. I doubt they would. That that makes no sense for them to do um, financially. They're not going to do it. It's just you're you're setting yourself up for failure if you think that the Browns are actually going to do that. Some people have pointed out, well, the gr- the roof to the stadium looks transparent. So maybe you can grow grass through there. Well, that roof is not made out of actual glass or would not be made out of actual glass. That roof is made out of something called ETFC foil. ETFC foil is a type of plastic that like was used by NASA that lets about eight to 10% of sunlight in. So when you're sitting in a stadium and the roof is a million feet away from you, it feels like it's translucent because it is slightly translucent. Um, And it lets sunlight in and it is enough to make you feel like you have that sunlight while also keeping the heat that the sunlight has out the stadium. So it's like a nice little trick. But what that does do is take out most of the sun rays that would go down to the grass and do the whole photosynthesis thing to help you grow Kentucky bluegrass. Long story short, that would not let enough sunlight in 
to grow natural grass. The other ways to grow natural grass in a fixed dome stadium would be to roll the grass out and grow it outside. I don't think that kind of system has been done in a climate that experiences the four seasons. The reason I think that's important is because the places that that rollout grass uh, system has been done has been Las Vegas and Arizona, two deserts. Because what if you're trying to grow grass outside, right? And it snows. Does that mess with the mechanism to slide it back into the stadium? Does that mess with the grass's ability to get grown because it is ultimately on a tray? Like, do those things affect it? And also, like, what kind of quality of grass you're going to be able to grow out there in the wintertime when you have less sunlight? We've seen this happen in Cleveland Brown Stadium. The grass always becomes significantly uh, more muddy <laughs> as the season goes on because Cleveland winters, less sun, less sun for the grass, the grass is just going to be in worse condition. It's just a natural um it's just the natural order of things for the Cleveland Browns or for Cleveland when it comes to natural grass. So, if you're hoping that that Brook Park Stadium is also going to have natural grass, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I would be shocked if it was natural grass. Like there would have to be an advancement in technology for that, that to be natural grass. It's more than likely not going to be natural grass. It's more than likely going to be the most advanced field turf they can find. Um, the argument for Brook Park or the argument against Brook Park, I think, is also one that you should take seriously. Because the Browns are trying to build a little shopping plaza around the stadium in Brook Park. We've seen that work in other cities. We've seen it not work in other cities, right? So a good example of it working, I brought up the battery in downtown, well, not downtown Atlanta, but in Atlanta, in the Atlanta suburbs. They did that. It worked out. That's great. Um, they built one of those kind of plazas in downtown Detroit around Little Caesars, mixed results. So the argument against that whole concept being in Brook Park is what if none of the development that the Browns are hoping would follow them happens, right? What if nobody wants to build a hotel? What if nobody wants to have a Super Bowl? What if the Final Four just doesn't want to come to Cleveland? What if nobody wants to sell stuff near that stadium? What you're going to have is a state-of-the-art stadium built in the middle of nowhere. Now, it's not really the middle of nowhere. It's right across from the airport. But that is the fear of moving the Browns to Brook Park is that you're going to have all of these businesses like you're basically going to build the Browns in the middle of a dead mall. And that would not be good. The hope for the stadium in Brook Park is that the Browns stadium is going to be able to attract more events and those more events will be able to attract customers to come to the downtown district and hang out. We talked about this right here. The Cleveland Browns stadium, as it stands currently right now, is the least used stadium in the city of Cleveland, despite being the biggest. This is a what well, the Browns are hoping that they could do something that makes that not the case. That is that part of it. I do think there's an argument that downtown like the Browns moving from downtown could actually be something that benefits downtown in the long run. Um, because you could use the money that you would spend on a football stadium that again, if you renovate Cleveland Browns stadium, likely going to be used maybe 10 times a year. I don't think that's the best use of money for the stadium. Like, I think if you were willing to build something that could attract people to downtown Cleveland or make people who live outside the city in the suburbs more likely to visit downtown Cleveland outside of a sporting event or a concert, then you would be better served than I think the businesses would be better served. I think from my experience growing up in Cleveland, the biggest issue downtown Cleveland has is if you don't want to see a show, or a sporting event, there is almost no reason to be in downtown Cleveland. 
especially if you're not like going to clubs and stuff. But even then, it's not that much of a reason to go to downtown Cleveland. A lot of other downtowns, that's not the case. And it's not because it's Cleveland. It's not because it's cold outside. It's because there's just not a ton there. The city has not really made a effort to attract people downtown outside of like building that one casino. It makes it so that the only reason you get used to going downtown is to watch a team play. There should be other stuff to do, right? The lakefront should be a draw to come downtown. Have you ever been to Chicago? Like Chicago has this beautiful lakefront walk that people use all the time when it's warm and it brings a ton of people to downtown Chicago from outside the city to in the city from the suburbs just there and it drives up business because it's all this walking area that you can use like it's just super easy to patronize a business while you're in downtown Chicago because you want to do the land walk you want to see the bean you want to do all these other things now look Cleveland's not Chicago but Cleveland does have a lakefront that is being unused. And part of the reasons it's being unused is because the football stadium has been down there for so long. Why not make the lakefront something that can attract people to come to Cleveland? Use that space to make this something that people want to come to no matter what the day. Like it doesn't have to rely on a team playing a game. It could be on other things. It would be a more robust way to build the economy for the city of Cleveland and a more robust way to make sure that the people who are running those businesses always have foot traffic to rely on to get customers. Also, you could do something about like the parking stuff that's going on in downtown Cleveland. Like that's also an issue too, but that's just my thoughts. I think that that's something that could work. I think a lot of times we fall into the crutch of, oh, sports teams are the only reason you could go downtown. There's so many other reasons to go downtown and there should be so many other reasons to go downtown and it shouldn't be reliant off of one sports team being there, right? You still want to keep the guardians in downtown. You still want to keep the, the calves downtown, like for obvious reasons, but the Browns leaving downtown should not cripple your economy. And if it does, you really got to ask questions about how you built that thing because they should not be that fragile, in my opinion. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Did this answer all of your questions? Y'all have a great day. Have an even better night. Peace.